Yeah, specifically white sharks we're looking for here. Once, we, once uh, Chris and his crew is able to get the shark on the lift, out of the water, then our scientific team will take over. We'll take blood samples. We'll actually uh, start tagging at that point as well. We put an acoustic tag in the abdominal cavity of the shark. We'll take a tissue sample. We'll look for parasites. Um, we'll start placing tags at the dorsal fin, the base of the dorsal fin. So we'll have five different kinds of tags we'll be putting on the shark, most of which will come off the shark very soon. Um, we'll have a blood sample taken almost immediately to get a sense of the health of the animal. And, uh, and we'll do this all, you know, methodically over the course of the 15 minutes the shark is on board. How does the shark always cooperate? So you're talking about something between 7,000 pounds. Remarkably, and despite what Hollywood would have you think, the sharks are very, very docile. Um, yeah, when they first come out of the water, a little bit of a panic there, and that's to be expected. You're bringing a fish out of the water. But once we were able to get the water over the gills of the shark so it can breathe adequately, cover the eyes of the shark, it tends to relax it almost immediately. It may pulse a little bit, but she lays there, at least in my experience, perfectly still. Okay, so after you do all that, how easy is it to get back into the water? Now it's just a matter of lowering the lift, and that's the beauty of the lift st system itself. You know, drop it down, bring it up, very, very easy. So we get down into the water, shark basically wakes up, you know, because we've pulled the, uh, uh, the hoses from its gills, uncovered its eyes, and she just swims away. You do all kinds of tests. What is, what is the ultimate goal for you as a, as a doctor or scientist? Uh, multifaceted goals, many objectives here. I think if you take a step back and look at the big picture, it's really to learn as much as we can about this very elusive species of shark, the white shark, in the Atlantic Ocean. We don't know a lot about it here. We know a lot about it in the Pacific and Indian Oceans where it's been studied for decades. Here it's somewhat of an enigma to us. We don't know very much about its basic biology, its life history, its ecology, you know, its reproductive biology. You know, how does it live from day to day in the Atlantic? And the kinds of tags we're putting on, the kinds of data we're collecting will give us a nice comprehensive look of, of the biology of this animal. And then from there, ultimately, is to provide the most comprehensive information to help us conserve the species, in addition to giving useful data information to folks who manage beaches around here. You know, we're in fairly close proximity to some of the most popular swimming beaches on the east coast of, of Cape Cod. So those folks who are managing beaches, opening, closing, really need the best available data to help manage those, make those decisions. And, and you know what, we've seen that over the last couple of years, especially that all of a sudden a beach will close because someone thought they saw a shark. Not necessarily they did see right. one. This will help out with that? I think so, yeah, it will. We're always going to have those sightings where somebody, you know, sees a shark. Yesterday we had a couple off uh, Westport, Horseneck Beach, uh, Buzzards Bay. Um, we, it's hard for us to confirm what those are. Is it a shark? A, B, is it, what kind of shark is it? So, you know, those are difficult, but if we, we have tags out, we'll be able to tell you where are these sharks any given day. What's the fascination with sharks, especially today? Because Jones was 1975. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I think people are fascinated by that which can potentially hurt them. You know, we, we have evolved on land. We're terrestrial animals. So, you know, we're frightened of big animals on land that can bite us. Now, when we go into the ocean, it's a completely mysterious world for us. And, and, and we're not necessarily very comfortable in the ocean, you know, but there are animals in the ocean that can hurt us. And sharks certainly have demonstrated, you know, over time, it doesn't happen much, but you don't need very many bites to have people get scared. So we're fascinated by that which can potentially hurt us. We're also fascinated by these animals because they're, they're top predators in the ocean. They haven't changed much in millions of years. You know, I think overall, I think people just find them to be an amazing creature.